This spicy noodle dish will definitely warm you up. Savory ground pork in a hot and intensely flavored sauce. This is Chinese comfort food at its best. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is behind the camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. You know, we've noticed the increase in the cost of uh, food and groceries, especially eating in a restaurant. I find like the prices are just astronomical. And we crave a lot of food that we would normally order in the restaurant. The good news is I'm here to teach you how to make some of those dishes at home at a fraction of the cost. So today we're making Dan Dan noodles, which I want to call Dude Dude noodles because Dude's real name is Dan. Um, this dish is like super savory and nutty and it is most often served over noodles, but you can have it on whatever you want. So if you don't have like Asian noodles at home, you can have it on spaghetti or fettuccine. It'll still be really yummy. And with the noodles, you can have it with like Chinese wheat noodles or egg noodles or even ramen noodles. It's all delicious and even on rice, dare I say. I have a pound of ground pork here and I'm just going to marinate this while we prepare the rest of our ingredients. Just break it up a little bit. Starting with two teaspoons of hoisin sauce. And hoisin sauce is like a kind of a sweet, savory sauce. One tablespoon of dark soy sauce. And if you don't have dark, you can just use regular soy. And a tablespoon of a Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is just a cooking wine. It's a rice wine. And I just liked the flavor of it with pork especially. But if you don't have this, we have been known to use bourbon or whiskey. Um, cooking sherry will work. If you just have regular rice wine, that will work also. A lot of people ask me about mirin in its place, and mirin is different. It's sweet and kind of thick. It's different from this type of rice wine. So I would not suggest using a mirin to, um, to replace it, but if you don't have it at all, I would just omit it. Maybe add another tablespoon of soy sauce. Okay, I'm also using about a quarter teaspoon of um, ground Sichuan pepper. And this pepper is I can, kind of a distinct flavor compared to others, but you could use a uh, ground white pepper if you want instead. And a lot of people like to grind their own, but I don't go through enough of it to justify that. So I'm just using the ground stuff. And you just wanna stir this around. In some of my videos, you may have seen that I only stir pork in one direction, otherwise you're going to like undo everything according to ancient Chinese secret, AKA my mom. But in this particular dish, I don't need to create the strands of making it into a pork patty or anything like that. So it's okay not to stir it in one direction. Just get it mixed up. Phew. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this marinate while I prepare the rest of the ingredients. I have one stalk of green onion that I'm just going to slice up for garnish at the end. So this is kind of optional. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But you really should. It just adds a little bit of freshness, right? Yep. I have a bigger than a thumb size piece of ginger and I'm a little bit lazy today. So I'm just going to grate it with the skin on into a bowl. And I've been using the organic ginger and they come much smaller than the bigger pieces of ginger that I normally get. So I do find that it's harder to scrape off all the skin in the nooks and crannies of the little pieces. You know what, the ginger skin is actually quite good for you. But make sure you wash them well. That's right, because there's a lot of bacteria that can hide in between. So yeah, just make sure you wash it really well. Yeah, it gives you about two tablespoons of ginger. I also have four cloves of garlic. Three of the cloves are going in here and one I'm gonna set aside for the sauce. 
I'm just breaking the skin so that it's easier to peel. Usually it comes off quite easily. Okay, one is going into the sauce. I'm gonna set that aside and the other three are going in here. Now we're moving on to the sauce, adding three tablespoons of regular soy sauce to my clove of minced garlic. And one tablespoon of dark soy sauce. And again, if you don't have dark, feel free to just add soy sauce in its place. Using a quarter cup of roasted sesame paste. So I guess it's like a tahini, but it's like roasted sesame. You could use tahini in its place, but it won't be as, I guess, rich in flavor because the the sesame paste is actually very um, aromatic in comparison. But, and another great substitute actually is peanut butter. So if you don't have sesame paste, just use peanut butter. Okay, what did I say, quarter cup? Okay, a tablespoon of regular sugar. And this is where the hot and spicy comes in. I'm very hesitant <laughs> to tell you to put a quarter cup of chili oil in here, but I'm going to. I don't know if we should use that much. I don't know, my uh, tongue <laughs> and stomach are unsure of this decision. <laughs> All right, I put in a quarter cup. So this chili oil has like chili, other chili things in it. It's not just straight up oil. So that's what's gonna flavor a lot of the sauce. Okay, and adding a half a teaspoon of this Sichuan pepper powder. Now I've read that Sichuan pepper is actually for the numbing effect of your tongue. Do you want that, dude? Numb my tongue. <laughs> we will see. All right, and we're stirring this up. Look at that red, dude. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Before I forget, I also chopped up some roasted peanuts just to add some more texture and yumminess to the noodles. So in Vancouver, we are so lucky to have these Asian markets where they sell all sorts of things. This particular preserved vegetable, which is called, I want to, I'm gonna butcher it, soy mi ya cai. It doesn't have any English on there, so it was really hard for me to find. And actually it did, it has it in the very, very small print. It says soy mi ya cai, right there. There are so many different preserved vegetables. There is practically a whole aisle. So I was looking for this specific one. We're gonna link some of our ingredients down um, in the description below to Amazon. If you have an Asian market, I would suggest you start there and not go straight to Amazon because this is only 59 cents for the package. I have no idea how much it would cost you on Amazon. In any case, I don't know what a substitute is for this because there's so many different types of preserved vegetables that go into Chinese cooking. They range in flavor from like sweet to salty to really salty to spicy to very sour. So I really wouldn't know what to do to guide you there. But for this specific one, if you can't find it, just don't even bother putting it in. I'm telling you this because we're not about the authenticity of recipes, but providing a really tasty meal. So if you didn't put this in there, you're still gonna come out with a really, really yummy noodle dish. All right, getting my wok going on medium heat. So we want to cook up the ginger and garlic first. 
People have been asking me why I film in my library and not in the kitchen. We have a galley kitchen, so it's really hard to film in there. And because I do a lot of my cooking with the wok, I like to use a gas burner. We have a glass top, which is not very efficient in terms of heating up a wok. So that is why we cook out here, so that you guys can have a better view of what we're doing when we're teaching you how to cook these recipes. Now that my wok is hot, when you see that whiff of smoke, wisp of smoke, it's time to get going. So I added about a tablespoon of oil, vegetable oil, and just adding the ginger and the garlic in here just to cook through. You only want to cook it for about 30 seconds. Then I'm adding my pork. So after you add your pork, you can bump your heat up to high. And we want to not just cook through the pork, but we want to it to kind of overcook. It's a little bit crispy from the pork fat that's still in there. The aroma from the ginger and garlic. Ooh, so Always good. so good. In the meantime, you also want to get your noodles going. So I have my noodles cooking on the stovetop right now. So you want that all ready to go so that you can plate it. All right, do you hear that sizzling? That's the pork frying in its own fat. Yummy, yummy. And you want to hear that sizzling. And we're gonna cook it for just another couple of minutes. Actually, it's salty, but kind of sweet also. I have no idea what you would substitute for this. Like I said, just omit it. I'm using half a pack, so I'm gonna say that's probably about 50 grams, which is what, three tablespoons worth? And this just adds some texture, some added flavor. You know, when you're eating this in the restaurant, you probably don't even realize it's there. So make sure you mix it well. You don't want a mouthful of this vegetable. Okay, I'm going to turn off the heat. Oh my goodness, it looks and smells amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it for your dish. All right, so I have cooked some noodles. We're just using these uh, white floured noodles. They're just super thin. You can use whatever size you like. Also blanched some green vegetables. This is Chinese um, yu choy. And you can just blanch it in the same water that you cooked your noodles in. Just spoon some of this over top. And this part, you can add as little or as much as you like. What do you think, dude? One more scoop? Sure, why not? Go for it. This is for you guys. This is gonna hurt. Top with a little bit of green onions. And some chopped peanuts. And to moisten it all up, we're just gonna add a little bit of chicken broth just on the sides. And there you have it. Are you all ready for? Oh yeah. The taste. Doesn't this look amazing, guys? You know, what I'm really digging about the last number of dishes is that they may look deceptively complex and complicated to make, but they're simple. But what you do get are the complex flavors. And you may not have known it when you go to the restaurants and order the food and slurp it down, but you can make it at home. All right, here we go. I'm gonna mix this up. 
and how it's usually served up is that the sauce is at the bottom with the ground pork and underneath the noodles and then you just you mix it up on your own oh my goodness I hope you guys can see the redness of this and I am from Malaysia but my stomach isn't I can smell the aroma and I think uh, this might be I think this might be the last taste <laughs> I'm not dead. I'm still alive. Uh, what I found is that I thought it was just straight fire when it hit my tongue, but in actuality, the the numbing nature of the the Szechuan peppers and and uh, and and chili, and it, that's exactly what it is. My tongue is still tingling. The flavors of the sauce is so complex and really you're getting all that salt, acid, fat and a whole lot of heat. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the textures of the noodles of course and it's soaked up that sauce. Make sure you mix it up really well and that great ground pork, the textures of the peanuts and a whole lot of flavor, a lot of depth, complexity, and spice. Mm. Okay. All right, thanks dude. Don't stop eating, just finish it. <laughs> All right, this is why you guys love us because I'm not going to give you a recipe where it's inedible because of the spiciness. You know that we can handle it. So if you look at a lot of the Dan Dan noodle recipes out there, you're gonna find that they use twice as much, if not more than what I've used in terms of the chili paste or chili oil going into the sauce. What's the great thing about this recipe is that you can add as little or as much as you want to your noodles and you're still going to get a lot of incredible flavor. So for more recipes just like this, comfort food at its best, go check it out. I will see you over there. <laughs>